Hey folks, it's Samad once again, and welcome back to another review. Uh, this is a film that I reviewed a long time ago, but I took it down. Uh, it was a review that I tried to do something silly, like using an avatar instead of my face, and it just didn't work out, and it was just stupid. And I wanted to do a fresh review, because I think this film deserves it, because I was looking on YouTube, and there's not a single review for this movie. And this movie's not even on DVD in the U.S. The only place I could find it is... When I looked online, um, is there's a DVD in Germany apparently, but that's it. For some reason, this is a 1982 film called The Challenge, starring Scott Glenn, Toshiro Mifune, directed by John Frankenheimer. You have music done by Jerry Goldsmith, and looking into it, a certain martial arts coordinator called Steve Seagal. Yes, as in Steven Seagal, as in later would be an Above the Law, Under Siege, Out for Justice, as well as shit like Belly of the Beast, and Attack Force, and Against the Dark. And... But this is 1982, and it's like Steve Seagal. The Steven Seagal? Yes. And this is a film that's a pretty damn good flip, but again, there was no reviews for it on YouTube. It's never been on DVD in the U.S. I don't know why. It's not a soundtrack issue, because like I said, Jerry Goldsmith did the music. John Frankenheimer, he's a guy who's no longer with us, the director. But my favorite film he directed was Dead Bane with Don Johnson. Really enjoy that movie. He also directed The French Connection 2, which I like. The Island of Dr. Moreau, which sucked. I know there's a documentary, I guess, with the original director, that Richard Stanley, the guy who was going to do it. And then he talked about all the stuff that happened. That's a, I don't know what the documentary is called, but that's one I would not mind checking out whenever I get it, whenever I'm able to, if I can find it. But, what was I going to say? He also directed, what was it, Ronin. And Reindeer Danes, which I don't I don't mind those two films either. But my favorite that he did was Dead Bane. But I really enjoyed this film, done John Frankenheimer. And like I said, it stars Scott Glenn. He's been in a lot of films. From the Sil Silence of the Lambs, The Right Stuff, Backdraft. He's in the new Daredevil TV series as Stick, the teacher of Daredevil, Matt Murdock. Uh, Scott Glenn does a great job in this. Toshiro Mifune, this is a guy who started in The Seven Samurai and Yojimbo. And even, I, like I said, Jerry Goldsmith doing the music, who's no longer with us. Um, Steven Seagal was a martial arts coordinator, which is crazy. And even people in supporting cast, like there's a henchman of the bad guy called Calvin June. I'm like, I recognize this guy, the henchman of the bad guy. And, he gets his head cut off at the end. Nice practical effect. I'm like, oh, that's the guy in Robocop. One of the bad guys. When Robocop comes in, fucks up the warehouse, the drug deal. And he's the guy who goes, oh, fuck you. That's Calvin June, one of the main uh, group of bad guys. You also have Sab Shimono. He's been in a lot of films. He was the bad guy in Ninja Turtles 3, Lord Norinaga. He's been in a lot of films if you look him up. Uh, there's a little boy which I'll get to who I thought he was he did a good job named the character name was Jiro. Kenta Fukasaku. And what's weird is I was watching this little kid and he has a nice relationship with Scott Glenn and which I'll get to and you know cute kid, not annoying, not irritating. And I looked him up. This is this little kid, he was about ten years old, nine, ten years old. He went on to to write the screenplay for the 2000 film Battle Royale and then Ronan directed the sequel and the guy's still directing so it's weird like I'm watching this little kid I'm like wow he wrote that film Battle Royale and he did the screenplay and he Ronan directed the sequel so it's just weird yeah. but yet this film is not on DVD so he has some recognizable people on this and the story is very straightforward. Scott Glenn is a boxer. He gets a, at his apartment a woman and a guy in a wheelchair. Ask him to take this sword. This is precious, valuable sword. 
take you through customs. Scott Glenn says no, because he's wondering, okay, is this a drug deal or something? He's like, no, no, it's legit. This is all you have to do. Scott Glenn accepts, because he needs the money. And right when he gets to Japan, boom. He gets put into a car. Bad guys have him. And he realizes sooner or later that he was used as a decoy. It was a fake sword that he has. And the real sword got through customs and was in the one guy's wheelchair. <clears throat> he, long story short, he escapes. He did a little foot chase. He gets stabbed. He gets saved by the girl. And takes, she takes him back to her father's place. And he later finds out that the bad guy and the father of the girl is Toshiro Mifune. He's a sensei, more in the traditional art of the sword, while the bad guy is Toshiro Mifune's brother. They've had this fight for years and years and years. And by this time, Starkland doesn't know the details. He wants to leave. The bad guys find him and offer him, okay, you go back and you say that you want to be a student. And you steal the sword, and if you do, we'll give you a shitload of money. And of course, he goes back. He learns the ways of the sword, he learns to respect these people, he falls in love with the girl, he makes a friendship with this little boy. And again, they have a nice relationship because the boy is not annoying, he's not irritating, he wants to be... Because uh, when you have a little kid, you could, if you write it the wrong way, but they didn't, and I thought they handled that very well. The kid was never annoying, he was, you know, cute. And... He's about to steal the sword, but he does, and he makes the moral right choice. But they kind of knew he was going to do that, but they let him see what he was going to do on his own. He said, well, you have to prove yourself. And there's a nice scene where he has to actually be in the ground with just his head sticking out for five days. I mean, it's supposed to be how long he can last, and he lasts five days. It's a nice little scene. And through that... It's like, you see that his skin gets more and more fucked up. There's rats crawling over him. There's a bud that he's got to eat. Looks like a real bud, too, that he ate. And you even get a respect from Toshiro Mifune, because Scott Glenn's like, how long did you last? And he goes, well, five days. You know, same as you. Yeah, but what I like about the film, it moved at a fast enough pace. I thought the... It's not... It's an action film, but it's not wall-to-wall -wall action. So if you're going in expecting lots of gunfights, if you're expecting explosions, if you're expecting car chases, you're not going to get it. I got into the story. I got into what was going on. Uh, you feel for why Toshiro Mufuni was doing this, because years and years ago, the bad guy, a.k.a. his brother, uh, wanted the sword and kill Toshiro Mufuni's son, slash him right in the back. Got his, uh, their father, you know, the grandfather killed. So now it's Toshiro Mufuni and his daughter. And some of the violence is like, oh shit, kind of violence. It's definitely R-rated. Like the wheelchair guy, uh, he gets tortured. <laughs> We're stuck in there and the guy gets tortured. And this is a guy in a wheelchair, he's got his face fucked up. And he's bleeding. You just push him out of the car to his death. Um, and especially uh, one shot, at, one or two shots at the end that I'll get to. But I just got into the story, and I like these kind of stories. That they they don't do a whole lot of nowadays, at least this well, I should say. They don't do it as well. Because Scott Glenn, he was likable enough. Uh, he has a little bit of a smart ass. I mean his big line to the bad guy, like the bad guy wants the sword and Stardlin goes, you come and get it, asshole. I thought Stardlin pulled it off very well and he handled the, I guess not tons of martial arts, it's not a Chuck Norris movie, it's not a Seagull, above the law, out for justice type of movie. But I got into the story and I thought the acting was fine and him trained in the sword, I thought it was a nice build up to it. And it was, again, it was nice to her. Yeah, hey, I recognize that guy. He was in Robocop. I recognize that guy. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith. 
mean, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite scores of Jerry Goldsmith, but it's Jerry Goldsmith. Jerry Goldsmith is still nice to hear his music. I would say he's my favorite composer. He's greatly missed. I mean, he composed Leviathan. He composed the Rambo films. He composed... Jerry Goldsmith composed so many great flutes. They just really miss him. And at least the first three Rambo films, I should say. In the ending, the, the girl gets taken, and Toshiro Mifune, the father, and then Scott Glenn, they storm this compound, the bad guys compound. compound. And Scott Glenn has an M16. Uh, Toshiro Mifune is fucking up people with a bow and arrow, and people get stabbed in the chest, and fucking people up in the elevator. Uh, a nice moment at the end where the Toshiro Mifune and the bad guy are having a duel, but... Uh, the henchman, the guy from Robocop, he fucks up because he shoots Toshiro Mifune in the shoulder and the bad guy doesn't like that because he wanted a fair duel. So he cuts the, his henchman's head off. Practical effect. And that's where Scott Glenn ha and uh, they have the challenge, the, a face-off. And it's a really good one because they have a sword fight in an office and he's like using all the the surroundings as best as he could, but it's a rough and tumble sword fight. It's not an expertly choreographed. What's the what's the example of that? It's not swords, but with lightsabers. The Star Wars prequels. The thing with the Star Wars prequels, you know, they're so expertly. It's like you could tell they've practiced that 150 fucking times. This is to be more like a dance. This isn't a dance. This is a rough and tumble fight. Like it would be in real life. So they're just barely getting them out of the way. It's not finesse. It's just you know more realistic, I guess the best way to put it. And Scott has been slashing the back. He did someone gets hit and hits him in the face. He's bleeding down the middle. Scott Lynn's using whatever he can. He Gets a stapler, staples the bad guy like right here. He cuts some wires and shots the the bad guy with the wires. Just using the environment of the office really well, and such a great kill for the bad guy. Cause literally, Skydland rises his sword, hits it, and the bad guy's head splits in two like a watermelon, like a coconut, like psh, just slams down. Psh, and you see it, and it's glory. He's like, whoosh. I remember the first time I saw that. I think it was when it was uploaded on YouTube. It might be uploaded on YouTube because it's a, it would be a VHS. Because unless you had the DVD in Germany, the only way you don't get it is on VHS. I think that's how it was the first time I saw it. Was on uh, was on YouTube. And it might still be a if you look for it. But that kill, I remember, like, oh shit, I just didn't expect that. I mean, this is a 1982 film. It's, I, don't, I don't know what it is, it just, I didn't expect that kill. I was like, oh, that's a great finale kill. And he gets the sword, he goes back to his new sensei and the girl he fell in love with and the movie ends and uh, it's a very straightforward movie. Again, if you're expecting tons of action, tons of fights, I mean, little physical get downs, I mean, I didn't go into all of them, but you did, like, during the training, them trying to train Scott Glenn, him getting his ass kicked, him training a little bit with the sword. There's a moment where they have a confrontation, Scott Glenn, Tisho Mufuni, and some of the bad guys. Um, it's not a big old brawl, it's just. Uh, sort of attack and then evade, get away. So it's not wall to wall action and yeah, no explosions, no car chases, nothing like that. But I didn't, I don't repeat myself, but I got into the story. Uh, Scott Glenn, I thought, did a good job. I thought John Frankenheimer did a good job directing. Is it my favorite of his? I, that would always be Dead Bang with Don Johnson. Very underrated movie. But this. Especially for a film that is not even on fucking DVD. I think it's pretty damn good. And I can't really think of much wrong with it. I mean, yeah, I, I, will, I would not have minded more action. 
I'm an action junkie. Doesn't automatically make a movie good, but I'm always for more action. But I don't. Know. I'll it is an action film. I'll put a little like action, maybe drama film as well. Not sure the best way to word it. Well, IMDb says it best: action, comma, drama. And yeah, this film didn't do anything. And yeah, for a film that's. I keep pointing this out. It's not even on fucking DVD. You get shit like Near's Evil and Reptilicus and fucking Tentacles on Blu ray. You get all these other fucking movies on Blu ray. Wes Craven's Hills of Eyes Part 2, which sucks fucking assholes and has a fucking flashback in a dog's point of view. A fucking movie where a dog has a flashback through his own fucking eyes that has a remastered Blu ray. But a film like The Challenge or a film like Murder by, Murder by Phone, ATA Bills with Richard Chamberlain or fucking Rad, which that's probably because of the soundtrack, but fucking get over it. But at least, you know, this film, Murder by Phone, A.K. Bells. I know there's others. I should just make a list of films I had never gotten a DVD in the U.S. How Deep Space with Charles Napier. I don't even think Crying Freeman with Mark DeCostas is on DVD in the U.S. I like that movie. I only have it on VHS, but I like that movie. Yeah, there's quite a few stuff. It's just like... Why not? Why isn't this on DVD, let alone Blu-ray? I don't know who the hell you interview. I don't know if Scott Glenn would get for an interview. Steven said, oh, Brett doesn't do interviews, but I don't know. You never know. I'm sure this is one of his first film experiences, how that was like. You never know. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to turn this to a 30 minute video or anything, but I just wanted to give a few thoughts. Well, more than a few. It's almost 20 minutes. I want to give. Fuck it. If no one else has reviewed this film, I think this film deserves at least a bit more respect than that. To never get reviewed on YouTube, to never get talked about. Because no one ever talks about this film. No one ever. I think the only person I ever heard it is. Uh, I was on the Sausage Factory, which is a little uh, streaming video uh, kind of podcast. So you're streaming live on YouTube. And I believe it was Jay the Steenray who mentioned this film. I could be wrong, but uh, I'm like, yeah, I remember that movie. But anyway, good film. Worth a look if you can find it. Is it the best martial arts film ever? No, it, I wouldn't even call it a martial arts film, but it doesn't deserve not to be on DVD for fuck's sake. That's my point. That's my biggest point. It's a film that's good enough to get at least a fucking DVD release. It has a badass end fight. I think that end fight, the sword fight, is pretty cool with a with a nice ending, like an oh shit shot. Damn, split his head like a coconut, like a watermelon. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Just gonna be random stuff, because it's more fun that way. Talk to you later.